As you may have noticed, I am not here today, but I wanted to begin to introduce you to the lens of critical analysis. And so if you look down at the handout that the guest teacher has given you, you will see that the packet contains a lot of information concerning literary criticism. When we talk about literary criticism, what we're really talking about is a lens through which the way we study literature. We have just finished Scarlet Letter. And so there's a number of ways to look at Scarlet Letter. You can look at it through a perspective of looking at the women in the text. You can look at it through the perspective of the language in the text. You can look at it through the literature, the literary devices themselves. There's many perspectives. Think of it like the Oscars. The Oscar um, contending movies were just announced. And so what we find is that there are best actors, best actresses. There's a consideration of cinematography. There's a consideration of setting, costumes, sound, lighting, special effects. So the different critics who go to the movies are looking at these particular areas of the movie. So if I'm a critic who particularly wants to see the effectiveness of special effects in a movie, I am going to go and watch the entire movie and I am going to take those particular things into consideration and give my evaluation of that movie based on those facts. So, having said that, we are going to look at these various lenses. Now, you have several in the packet, although I will tell you that there are multiple lenses, more so than what you have in front of you. But we're going to begin with new historical biographical criticism biographical and or historical analysis. Now, what you're seeing um, played on YouTube may be a little difficult to see the slide itself, but follow along on your PowerPoint. So it is exactly what it says. You're going to look at a text through the historical and biographical. So turn to each other for a moment and ask each other, okay, what's, in what historical period was the Scarlet Letter written and what historical period is it written about? So think about that. Analyze the text through the lens of history. So we can either look at it that Hawthorne was writing it in the 19th century, about the 17th century. What does that do? How does it influence? Or we can look at it within the context of the setting itself, which is what we did when we studied the Crucible. New historicism and biographical criticism bases interpretation on the interplay between the text and the historical context. Influence of the author's life and or intentions on the text. Now that means obviously that if you're going to take that perspective, then you have to do some research on the author, usually in several places because there's different perspectives of an author's life, and bring that bearing to the text and look for a coordination. Interprets the text through the systems of meaning available at the time of the writing or during the historical context. So what were the things that were going on during the time when the text was written. We'll specifically look at some of this when we get to Huck Finn, but we've already done much of this in terms of the Crucible and in terms of the Scarlet Letter. So I'm going to ask you to look at the sheet that you've been given to do in conjunction with this work and respond to this, make these connections in relationship to other texts. So we're gonna pause the recording at this moment and give you a few moments to go ahead and do that. All right, next we're going to look at reader response criticism. And you'll notice it says explores and seeks to explain the diversity of readers' responses to the literary works. Reading is something we do. We've talked about active and passive studying here. Reading is something we do, although it appears to be a passive activity. While you're reading, your brain is making connections, your eye movement, all of those things, you're thinking, all right, or at least you should be thinking as you're reading. Meaning is created by the reader rather than discover. Emphasis on how the work affects the reader, phrase by phrase, clause by clause, sentence by sentence. Again, I'm going to ask you to look down at your sheet, and I want you to think about what are the various parts of our psychology, our thinking, that could possibly influence the way that you use or respond to a text. What is that perspective? What are the things about being human about the way we think that could influence how we respond 
to a particular work of literature. So jot those things just quickly, a couple of those things. Okay, and the second one, emphasis on how the work affects the reader. What is the influence? Phrase by phrase, clause by clause, sentence by sentence. Right now, would you think about a few of the literary devices that authors use that might have that kind of influence on you as an individual? And just jot down one or two. All right, the next one is feminism. Now, it's not a word we're unfamiliar with. We understand what feminism is. So let's talk about feminism as a means of evaluating a text. The first point says, believes that a work doesn't have an objective status. Any reading is influenced by the reader's gender or attitudes toward gender. Second, analyzes the text with the belief that literature has largely been controlled by men. And in particular, dead white men is the perspective that most people have. Asserts that men and women are different. Okay, that's not exactly startling to us, but for many years, when the feminism movement first started, that was a big major issue, asserting that men and women were not different, that in fact there, there was a sort of unisex approach to the sexes, but things have changed, all right, that people, that men and women write differently, they think differently, they read differently, and that is you know, a big part of life. Just watch any couple watching a football game, um, sitting in a movie, what movies they pick, how people respond to children, um, all of those expectations. This is just the reality and recognizing of the difference between the sexes. Ask the reader to consider what the role of gender is in the text, how it plays out. And what I want you to think about now, and I want you to look on your sheet, I want you to think about the role of women in the text that we have read. All right. Think about the crucible. Think about Scarlet Letter. In particular, let's look at those two texts and just for a moment, jot down how do the women appear. Now, I want you to do that in your own gender. All right. I want you as a man to think about how did, you know, um, Abigail appear? What, how did Elizabeth appear? What kind of woman was she? And when we look at these things, how do we interpret them? When we think about Scarlet Letter, what was the reception as for the men in class to Hester Prynne? Now, let's take the flip side. Ladies, I'd like you to think about what is your thought concerning John Proctor? What is your thought concerning John Hale? What about um, Reverend Paris? What about, in this context, Dimsdale, Chillingworth? Let's think about how we think about those, but in relationship through our own sexual being, our own gender. So take a moment and write a few things down and then discuss.